think we've got a lot more people watching this on night than we have in the <laughs> building, but that's okay. Because we're still going to praise the Lord. We're still going to experience His presence in a mighty way. Let's just open with prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your hand of protection upon us in this place tonight and for all of those who are watching this evening. Oh, you're so good to us. And I know that you are mighty and that you are strong and that you were able to deliver us from the hands of the enemy. And so we rest in that this evening. We have come into this place and we have gathered in the name of Jesus to worship you, Father, to worship you and to praise you and to thank you for your provisions for us this past week. Lord, come in a special way in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and move among your people tonight. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Before we sing ourselves this evening, I wanted to show you something. Some of you probably have never seen this before, but did you know that all of creation praises God? The Bible says that the trees of the field, they clap their hands mm -hmm. unto him. And I believe that the birds of the air, I believe that the fish of the sea and all that swim the paths of the sea, as it says in Psalm 8, they praise God. We came across this video. I just wanted to show you. I come before you today. This little guy is praising the Lord with all he's got.
requires reaching to touch him. That's what we're doing when we're praising, when we are worshiping, we are reaching. We are reaching so that we might touch the heart, the heart strings of God as his children.
where you are when you're praising him, when you are praying unto him, did you know that you're bringing forth the one who was and is and is to come? You're bringing forth his presence in the situations. As we pray and as we have prayed this past week, I must tell you that the Lord's presence has gone into situations and changed them and turned them around and caused them to be something that they were not. Before they were petitioned in the holy throne room of our Father. His presence is our responsibility for those who are lost. It is our mantle to bring the word of God. It is our responsibility to pray for those we need a touch from God. It is our responsibility to push back the forces of darkness that envelop people that we know. Are you with me? Hallelujah. We are a mighty people. The Lord does not look for numbers. He looks for might through His Spirit. One could put a thousand, two could put ten thousand to flight. There's enough power in this room and in those that are watching. There's enough power to break bondages of darkness in people's lives. Yes, people must submit. Yes, people must be willing to repent. Yes. But our part as intercessors, as those who stand in between, is to call out their names and to bind with strength and cords which cannot be broken through power of the Holy Spirit and to cast those things away from people that we love and care for so that they have a chance. I'm telling you, they don't have a chance in this world. Except for the Spirit of God. Move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have such might. We have such power. We have such responsibility. Let us never take it lightly. If anything, we should be spurring each other on and encouraging one another in prayer. And in faithfulness. And in our knowledge of Him. In our knowing that the effectual, fervent prayer of righteous people of God changes, moves, and removes, and avails, and causes many things to happen. Who needs something to happen for somebody? Yes. You know the names. He knows my name. He knows their name. And you are able to deliver. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who are thinking of somebody. We rebuke. We bind in the name of Jesus. Through the power. Through the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. We bind those that are penetrated into those lives. We bind them in the name of Jesus and we push them back so that the light of our glorious Lord may begin to shine, that their eyes may be opened, that their ears may begin to hear. Oh, Lord God, we know that you are able to deliver and we stand in agreement with your practices and your principles. And we accept the responsibility that we have. We command those things forth that are not, that they be. And those things that be, that they be not in those lives. Blessing and glory and honor be unto you, Lord Jesus. Throughout all of eternity, touch lives, O oh God. Touch those who are not in this place tonight because they need a healing. Touch from you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that healing virtue flow to those lives. He 
infiltration into them. Restore their minds, O oh God. Restore their emotional health in the name of Jesus. That they be whole. That they be well. Right now, Lord, touch them. Those that are watching, those that are being prayed for right now, all over, oh God, touch them. Move amongst your people. Move amongst the lost. Move amongst those who need to be brought back into the fold, oh Lord. The prodigal son and their prodigal daughters, they need to be brought back, oh Lord. I pray that their hearts be pricked this evening. And that they begin the journey which really is very short for they only need to kneel and ask and you are oh so willing and oh so faithful and wonderful. So thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. You're going to bring them through. There's some people that need to be brought through. You're going to bring them through the fire. You're going to bring them through the flood. You're going to bring them through all of the trials and bring him to that safe harbor of your presence. God leads his dear children along. Let's sing that to me. Thank you, Father.
especially those who become believers, I promise, a walk in the park for the rest of their life. Matter of fact, the enemy, he comes after us more than anybody else. But praise God, all that does is give my God, your God, an opportunity to raise the bar and to protect us and to take us farther than we ever would have gone if we'd have just been left in a comfortable state. It's when the waters rise and then when the flood comes and the fire, it's then that we call upon the blood. I find 
joy. Mm -hmm. I find joy in the fact that when we pray, that things change in this world, mm -hmm. that things change for our families. I so coveted towards the end of my grandfather's life when I was walking with the Lord, the, the fact that he prayed for me and all of my other cousins and his family every, every day, three times a day. If not, he prayed. Oh my. I'm sure his pile of rewards was ever increasing as the enemy was subdued. Thank you all for that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna continue on in Acts this evening. Uh, we finished Acts 5 last week, and so we're gonna move right into Acts 6. I'm not gonna dwell on it too long this evening because I have a couple other things that I want to, that are relevant to the time we are in and to the things that are happening right now. I want to go into those, and I have a couple videos at least one of them you all online will see, but probably not both, because again, there are certain things that we discuss and that we show and that we do here that if we were to broadcast them and put them out, we may find that uh, our video is taken down. I heard of uh, a Christian school administrator recently that had a video taken down just because he was quoting Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, which are called by my name. Hmm. He put that out there, and for some reason, some artificial intelligence, some demonic intelligence, decided that that shouldn't be out on the public platform. Why? Because it's powerful. Sure. <laughs> the enemy doesn't like the things that destroy his work mm -hmm. to be broadcast, but we're going to broadcast. Mm -hmm. We're going to speak in the name of Jesus. And we're going to call upon the power of God to demolish and destroy the works of the enemy. We're not going to sit by and allow the enemy to come closer and closer. But the Lord told us that we are to go out what? We are to take charge. And we are to take back the territory that the enemy has been stealing from us. The enemy comes to what? Kill, steal, destroy. Matthew 10.10. 10. But Jesus said, I have come. I have come that you have life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. hmm. How do you get abundant life? Well, you, first of all, you rise up and understand that you have some authority in your life. Now that you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you've got some power. You've got the ability to cause things to change in your circles. Amen. You may not be able to make things change in your city, but you can make things change around where you live. You can make things change for those that you know in your family, your friends. You can cause things to change by calling upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Acts 6, starting with verse 1. As soon as it comes up on the screen, come on. There you go. <laughs> oh, you can't see it anyways. Can you? <laughs> And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient 
to the faith. And Stephen was full of faith and power and did great wonders and miracles among the people. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's finish out reading the chapter. And I may not finish the message on the chapter. Then there arose certain of the synagogue. Know this, that whenever the power of the Holy Spirit comes unto a person and they start operating in the provision of God, that there's going to be something that comes up against you. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and of them Sicilia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able huh, to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said this man seeketh not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us and all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Every time that the work of the Lord is being done, there is automatically another work taking place. The enemy of God works immediately to set up shop, to disrupt and cause division. A house divided against itself cannot stand, and the enemy knows that, and if he can bring division into a house of God, he knows that he's accomplished a mighty dark deed. Now, sometimes a division is valid. But when men seek to answer the problem of the division within themselves, it gives the devil the opportunity to destroy. We just quoted John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Let's look at how the Holy Spirit turned this problem initially in the church into a great blessing unto the church. Now, thankfully for that first church there, that the, the apostles that were leading and guiding and starting it were the very same men that had been with Jesus. They were fresh off the boat, as you would say. They'd been walking with Jesus. They knew him intimately. They saw him crucified. They met with him for 50 days after he rose. They knew Jesus very, very well. And they knew his wisdom and his power because it had been shown to them over and over in their experiences of life. And every time that trouble came, Jesus always had the answer. Right? Mm -hmm. He always does. God always has the answer to your trouble. Every time. You need money to pay your taxes. Go fishing and get some gold out of a fish. You have a problem in your body and you're sick and you are a woman and you crawl and you reach and you finally touch the hem of his garment. And you are instantaneously healed. No matter the problem, Jesus is able to solve it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Aren't you thankful that there's always an answer? Jesus is the answer. We sing that song. Oh, how I love it. Jesus is the answer 
for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Yes, he is. He's the way, the truth, and the life. <coughs> now, when we were reading this story that we just looked at, what was going on was this. The church in Jerusalem had gotten started. And the people that were first converted were Jewish people. And now they were Christians. And the next thing that happened was that Gentiles started receiving the word of God. Now they were not Gentiles like you and I think. They were proselytized Gentiles. They were Gentiles who had, yowch, if you're a guy, and decided that you were going to be Jewish. <laughs> and if you're a guy, you know what that means, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Circumcision as an adult. It means that you adopted their customs and their other things. Because in the beginning, the church was a little bit confused. And Paul had to help, and the apostles had to help. The Lord had to help and sort all of that out. But these other people that came into the church, they called them the Grecians. They were Christians also. And in the early church, there was so much going on. If you were in the culture of Israel and you had a job, and then all once you became a Christian, your boss just might say, hey, you go home. You don't believe like we believe anymore. They, they ostracized, just like Jehovah's Witnesses do, like Amish do. And, you know, you go outside the parameters of what they say you could do, you're, you're out. You're not going to get a job. You're not going to get our blessing. You can't even have food. And so some of these people were suffering. And then the men that were in charge, they were distributing food. They were distributing whatever the widows needed. And the Grecians said, hey, we feel like our widows, they're being, they're being mistreated. They're not receiving all of the food that these over here are getting. We're a part of the body of Christ too. What, what are you going to do about this? Well, in today's climate, today's culture, there would be church leaders that would say, well, we will look into the matter and we will discern and discover what the solution is and we will take care of it. And perhaps something would change and perhaps something wouldn't. But you see, the wisdom of Jesus told the apostles to do something different and told this early church to do something different. He said, pick from you seven men that are of that group that say that their widows are being mistreated. Pick seven men from that group, and guess what? They are going to be the ones that are in charge of the distribution now. Now, it takes a little bit of faith to do that. Say, well, now we may be the ones that are shortchanged because we put these other people in charge. But that's not the way it worked, because God honored that. The ones full of the Spirit of God, they humbled themselves, and instead of saying, we'll take care of it, they appointed the ones with the grievance to be in charge. And wouldn't it be nice if the people of God operated in the same manner today? Problem solved. This is the way the kingdom of God is expanded. The things of this world need to be addressed at times, but the kingdom work must go on regardless of them. And when men and women of God, they come together understanding that many tasks are available and needful and ask of the Holy Spirit to help them in a work. The church grows by the Spirit of God. We all have our part, amen? Everybody that becomes a part of the church of Jesus Christ has a responsibility, something that they are to be doing to help the church grow. And that is why the church grew, because everybody jumped in and helped and did what they needed to do. And so as we go down through the story, then we find that Stephen is all at once put on the hot seat. Because he apparently had the most miracles going on. He had the most lofty 
position in that group. He was the most humble. He had the most wisdom by the Spirit. And when people came and said things against him, they could not argue with the God, with the logic that, and the wisdom and the knowledge that God gave him. Awesome. No matter what they said, the Lord gave him the words to put in his mouth, and he spoke. Of course, it made religious men more angry, but it brought peace to the body and to the believers. It says that as he was speaking the words of God, that his face became that of an angel. What does that mean? It means that there was a countenance change. It means that as he was speaking, the Spirit of God was being poured into him at such a tremendous rate that there was a light that began emanating from his face. Just like Moses, when he went up to the mountain and he met with God and he came down, the people could not even look at him because of the presence of the Lord coming off of his body. The same thing was happening with Stephen. Oh, that that would happen with us. That would be so close. That we would be so much in tune with the presence and so filled with the Holy Spirit that his countenance will become our countenance. Hallelujah. Awesome. Next week we'll look at what happened to Stephen. And we're going to see something very interesting that the Lord does as Stephen is being martyred. This week, I want to touch on something because current events in this world are traveling and speeding us towards something that was foretold of long ago. For too long, the church has done a lot of talking about things and not really believed. But now, the church is being silenced and being forced to confront something that is a reality in our lives. And it's causing trouble in, I think, many Christians' lives because the reality of God's Word, when it starts finally settling in, if you ever experienced this, when the reality of God starts settling in on you, sometimes the things that you've been doing, they become uncomfortable. And you start realizing that Maybe you're not as much, maybe your belief system, maybe your faith is not what you thought that it was. But the Lord wants to, he wants to strengthen you. And he wants to bring you to a point of wisdom and knowledge and understanding during this time that we're going through. I want to, if you have your Bible, if you would turn to Hosea, Chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. I'm going to read those. And then for this first part, I, I have a video that I want to show you that perhaps will make something jump out and become a little bit more real to you than what you may have even thought that it is. But the Lord had Hosea to write this. My people, that's you, that's me, they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. There's a lot of people that have forgotten the laws of God. Now, I'm talking about Christian people. I'm talking about church people. They have forgotten the laws of God. They have been consumed they have become consumers of things for themselves. They have become lost in the myriad of things that are available to them that this world calls luxuries and goods. And they have become lost in all that. And they're happy to continue in that until something comes and smashes everything that they thought was blessings from God, but it turns out may 
not have been so much blessings of God, but something that was given to them so that they would do other things to bless others. But God says, because you started operating that way, I will forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit boredom and shall not increase. Because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. Many, sad to say, even in the Christian world, numb themselves to the realities of Christ through many different things. Whoredom obviously refers to women to men outside of a relationship that God has ordained, but it also means going after strange gods, going after strange things, things which you should have no part of. Because people have left the foundation stone, the Lord has taken things away. They shall not increase because they have left off. If there's not increase in your life, perhaps you need to re-examine where you are at. But I'm getting a little bit off my point here because I want to show you how close that we are to the end. People a hundred years ago could not even have imagined, they could not even 50 years ago have thought of the things that you and I are seeing. The mark of the beast it is also close. Watch this. You may be an atheist and you may not believe in Holy Scripture, but that does not change the fact that the mark of the beast is upon us. For those unfamiliar with the mark of the beast, it comes from Revelation 13 in the Bible. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. Whether it is biblical prophecy or not, the evidence suggests it is a very real agenda. Every universal barcode has three guide bars, each one representing a six. When the inventor, George Joseph Lohr of IBM, was asked of this, he replied, Yes, they do resemble the code for a six. There is nothing sinister about this, nor does it have anything to do with the Bible's mark of the beast. It is simply a coincidence, like the fact that my first, middle, and last name all have six letters. Perhaps it was a coincidence, or even a joke. But look at what we have today. In 2004, the FDA approved a chip that is implanted into a person's hand. In 2019, Elon Musk and Neuralink have announced that they are planning on implanting computer chips into people's heads so that we can merge with artificial intelligence. MIT, under funding of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, has developed a quantum dot ink implant that can be monitored by a smartphone. And in 2020, world patent number 060606 was published by Microsoft Technology, titled Cryptocurrency System Using Body Activity Data. It outlines a technology wherein human body activity associated with a task provided to a user may be used in a mining process of a cryptocurrency system. 
the human is given an activity to accomplish, which is sent from a body sensor to the cloud and to the cryptocurrency system, rewarding the human with money. And while this is happening, the world is being told to stay at home until a vaccine can be developed, while the 5G needed to run artificial intelligence is rapidly rolling out worldwide. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Humanity is being asked to abandon a world based on God's law and accept a world based on man's law. In other words, the law of the state. Whether you believe in biblical prophecy or not, the mark of the beast is becoming very real. And at the speed of which things are now going, it seems we will soon discover how many people will accept the mark and how many will resist. For InfoWars.com, this is Greg Reese. Is it real yet? <laughs> my Lord and my God. How many people, it seems like they've had spiritual lobotomies and they're not paying attention to what is being set up in the world. It's no longer, oh, that's just something that could, it's something it's not something that could maybe happen in the future. So it's something that could happen now. Oh, how close are we to a shout and a trumpet, saints of God? <laughs> Anytime now, we could be going home. But I'm not willing. I'm not willing that my loved ones be left behind. I was talking to someone this week who said, we're leaving things around our home. Bibles opened up. Leaflets, pamphlets, talking about the end times. Why? So that when we're gone and the people that come in and try to take our food and hoard it and everything else, that there'll be something there that they can read that will tell them and explain to them what has happened. You see, I believe that as chaos and as confusion, who's the author of confusion, by the way? Satan. Satan. That as chaos and confusion envelops and increases in our day and age, that there will come a time when there will be so much disruption in the things of this world and in people's lives that they're really not going to notice when, relatively speaking, a few handfuls of Christians are gone. There's going to be too much else going on for them to notice that. All that they're going to know is that, wow, look at this world leader that is just seeing so many things that make sense. And now I think we're going to have a real shot at some peace in this world now. What happened to those Christians? I don't know. I heard there's a, I heard there's a big group of them at some of these churches, though, that they're saying something about that they've been left behind. That they weren't living right. And some of them that were pastors, they're, they've been laying on the floors weeping and calling out to God. Asking for forgiveness and for their congregations that they led in the ways of wickedness and not in the ways of God. These things are coming. Mm -hmm. It is for you. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, a person who's been baptized in the Holy Spirit and is filled with the Spirit of God, I can only say I have peace in the midst of this storm going on out here. The COVID storm, the BLM storm, whatever the next storm is, I got peace like a river flowing through me. You don't think other people notice? I think people do notice. Mm -hmm. People are on edge everywhere. But when you come in, it's like, no, I'm not worried. 
And you should be. No, I, I shouldn't be. <laughs> you see, I, I, I know where all this is going. I know how it ends. I, I've read the book. Have you read the book? There's a book. It's called the Bible. <laughs> and it tells exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Some of what you just saw on the screen, the book told us. Now, I find it interesting that this video was not put out by a quote-unquote Christian ministry. Now, are you shocked? Well, what well, sure sounded Christian. Well, I think some people in the world right now have a little bit more sense than what the church has. Mm -hmm. When was the last time some of you have ever been to a church service where they preached about the end and about how you need to get right in your life? Because Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. He's going to take his bride out of this place. Hmm. I'm ready. Lord, help me to be ready. Don't that make you just want to say a little bit of extra, put a little bit of extra praying time in? Make sure you're right. Make sure. Mm -hmm. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beasts, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Why would people take out patents with the number 666? Why would all of the products that you buy in the entire world right now have barcodes on them with 666? And you can keep adding things to those lists, but why? Well, because the Bible said that was going to happen. That's why. Do you believe it? Yep. I believe it. I want to pray right now, and then we'll uh, close out our service, and then I have uh, something else that I want to share with those that are here this evening that they can they can then forward it on to other people. And it's a it's about the truth behind the masking, and there's a lot there's a lot of spiritual implications to masks. We were at someone's home one time, and we were praying because they had activity in the home that was scaring the children and quite frankly them. And you know what they had in their living room? There's a collector of masks from all these different tribes and places around the world. And so as we prayed, and we were praying against the spiritual kingdom of darkness, the Lord opened some of our eyes and we're like, you know, and I asked, I'm like, now tell me, why do you have all of these masks up here? He's like, oh, I just like collecting those. I said, do you understand that those are used in other cultures as a way for the kingdom of darkness to overcome? And the people that put those on, they actually inherit, imbibe, and become the persona of the demon that caused that mask to be created. Like, oh, we didn't, we didn't know that. I said, I, I would suggest that you take those down off your wall. I don't know what they're worth or whatever, but I it's suggest great. that you just get rid of them. And I believe they did. Well, we have a different mask going on right now, don't we? But I gotta tell you, there's a spirit behind that mass too. Heavenly Father, I pray that the church be comes awakened to the reality of the times that we are in. Jesus, you taught us in your word plainly to look for certain signs and when we saw them to know, to even understand that you were at the door. We are to understand the seasons. We are to understand these things. So, Father, I ask for understanding, supernatural wisdom and knowledge through the Holy Spirit to come into the hearts, into the minds, the wills, the emotions of the people who call themselves your people. And that they would be awakened from their slumberness and that they would come to realize that the time is short. 
that we must work while it is yet day, for the night is coming soon when no man will be able to work. Our work will be finished. So help us, Holy Spirit. Fill us with that wisdom, with that dunamis, that power that we need to witness, to pray, to bind, to cast forth from those that we love and from those of this world who are so confused and lost. Help us, Lord. Help us. Oh, we need your help. Help the leaders of this land, oh God, those that are so unrighteous, Lord. God, forgive us for allowing and putting men and women into offices who are evil. Forgive us. Help us. Help us to restore as much as is possible to give opportunity to others to come into the kingdom and help us, O oh God. We are a needy people. And we know that in and of ourselves there's nothing that we can do, but your spirit within us can move and change the world around us. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I want to leave you with the scripture, those of us that are those of you that are on online right now. Scripture, Matthew 10, starting with verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Is that not where you are at right now? Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And brother shall deliver up brother to death. And the father and the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Did you know in places like North Korea that if a person is caught being a Christian in a family, that they not only take that person, they take the entire family. And then they take the grandparents. You see, they want to extinguish the flame of the gospel, and so they don't stop. This is why it's so dangerous to be discovered, because it means that all of your family is going to perish with you. China, very, very hard on Christians, true Christians, right now. It's not reported in our media, but you can find it. But I said all that to say this. Verse 16 says, We are sheep in the midst of wolves. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I want to give you a practical application of that regarding wearing masks. May the Lord give you understanding that it does you no good to go in some place and take a stand and get in trouble, perhaps arrested, and all, that does not do any good. Be wise as a serpent. Oh yeah, I'll wear my mask to walk in your store. But when I come out of your store, it's coming off. Why? There's a lot of reasons, but I can't tell you. Because they'll, for certain, <laughs> cut us off. Mm -hmm. Okay, But there are valid reasons. There are true reason truth there is truth as to why we should not do certain things so be wise children of God be wise operate stealthily when you hear trouble coming I mentioned this in a message a while back the serpent he's close to the ground he feels the footsteps do you feel the footsteps of the enemy coming 666 do you feel it do you see it coming be wise 
have understanding, the Bible says, you operate as much as you can under the radar so that you can continue to do what? Preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. People need to hear it. They got to hear it. There's no hope if they don't hear it. That's your homework assignment. That's your job. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Glory to God. I pray God's richest blessings upon you this coming week. And we will be here next week. Please meet with us. Uh, if you can, if you have prayer requests, please let us know. Post them on Facebook. We have a mighty army of prayer warriors. And we have mighty answers to prayer. And we see people healed, delivered. We see people all the time that are brought into better relationship with the Lord because of what we do. So be blessed. God bless you. Until next week. Amen.